Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Two Stocked. I think this is number six, if I'm not mistaken. And today, as you can see, I'm playing Ariel. So as per the last episode, I'm going to start by just giving you guys the rundown on my build. I didn't show the draft today, and that's just because I forgot to hit record like I do 90% of the time when I'm playing. Um, so my level one talent that I took that you did not see me take was increasing clarity and that is the wings quest the one that makes it so that the more of those that you land as you can see i just got a point there the more you land the more damage that it does over time and the reason that you take that at level one is frankly because the other ones are trash at level four you're going to see me take majestic span that's the one that just increases the radius of it by 15 percent and this is kind of another weird throwaway one with ariel where you don't really know what to take the other ones are pretty niche in that they're they only activate when you hit people against walls with your lash move or the whatever the crap that move is called the the whip uh the one of them is a quest that only starts after you've hit six people into the wall and it boosts the damage which can be pretty fun late game but it's just so niche that i find myself having trouble taking it a lot of the time unless i know that it's going to be like a high I don't know, a map with a lot of clutter or playing against idiots that I'm landing it a lot on already, I might chance it. But for the most part, it's a better idea to just just go with the safe talent that you know you're going to get a lot of usage out of. That um, Majestic Span is, is always a safe pick that you're going to get to use a lot. At level 7, this is one where you kind of got to take it as you go. Um, this game I take Energize Cord and that's the one that makes your auto attacks give you more energy and that's nice because it's just very consistent. The other option at this one is uh, it, it gives, what is it? Oh, it, it gives uh, energy based on damage that your team takes. So when you, it's good if you're like hatting a tank. So both of those talents kind of save you if your DPS aren't doing a good job of increasing your clarity. Um, but I preferred the uh, auto attack one. It, it's just a little bit more consistent. At level 10, I take Agus, and that's just because Agus is maybe the best, one of the best alts ever. Um, you make someone go invincible, and you basically turn them into a bomb at the same time. Sometimes I'm super tempted to take Res because it feels like a nice button because there's so many idiots that just suicide for no reason. It's nice to be able to just bring them back, give people a seven ch second chance, and it kind of can save you sometimes when um, when you have people that will just die for no reason. Like a lot of the time in Hero League, you'll see someone going and die, and it's nice to just like, now you have a button that means that you are you can let that idiot suicide, and you'll give, be able to give him a second chance. But it does kind of make you feel a little bit weaker when you're all five up. So I want to go with a talent that is just gung-ho trying to win the game, and I feel like Agus is that. At level 16, I went with Reservoir of Hope this game. And uh, the other two options are the ones that are either going to A, empower someone's spell power that has the crown, or B, increase someone's attack speed that has the crown. So in this game, I was not impressed with my DPS right from the get-go. That's kind of why I took that the uh, level 7 talent, Energized Core, because uh, it just makes you a little bit more self-sufficient. And same with this one in Reservoir of Hope. That's kind of the one that's just you're, you're going to be doing your thing in getting energy. Uh, a lot of the time if someone's carrying or if I'm noticing I have a really good player on my team, like sometimes there'll be a good Vala or a good Kale Fast, then I'll take the talent to boost that Vala or boost, boost that Kale Fast. And then that's a good move, but this game I wasn't impressed with my teammates, so I took Reservoir of Hope. And finally, at level 20, there's a couple good options depending on the alt that you've taken. Uh, this game I took Shield of Hope, and that's, again, that's that's the team fight one, right? Along with Agus. I want to take the talents that are not trying to bring back the game. I'm trying to snowball the game, right? So I took the talent that'll give your team that big clutch shield when you're deep into a fight, and you'll see me use it later, I think. Um, and that is it for the build this week. So I hope that that's helpful to anyone who's playing Ariel. This is maybe like I, I got Ariel to level 5, and this is like my second game in ranked as Ariel, and I don't look at guides. The reason I don't look at guides for talent builds and stuff is because a lot of the time I like I know that I'm not good enough to be getting the max out of every talent, right? So it do, it doesn't necessarily mean that what the highest win rate talent is or the mathematically most efficient talent to take is is going to be the best one for me because I don't play the most efficient game because I'm not that good at the game. So you you want to try to 
make your build for yourself. Like for example, at level four, if you're amazing at hitting the whip and sending people into walls, then don't take the increased wind span. By all means, take the quest one if you're going to be whipping people and you can start exploding people, right? Maybe this game would have been a good one to take it because as you can see, Nazebo's hitting a lot of walls right now. So I'm getting free whips off. Um, yeah, I kind of do that with all, all of my builds. I don't really look at the build guides too much. I just kind of do my own thing. Sorry for that rumble there, getting a phone call. Um, that's my girlfriend. And I have a feeling I know why. It's um, a couple weeks ago, I was the designated driver for my brother's birthday. And I got a text message the other day. And it's this person, um, my brother's friend's younger sister and her boyfriend apparently left a bag in my car full of like all their favorite clothes. Uh, and they're asking me if I can A, find it, or B, can they come pick it up? And I know they live right beside me. So I was like, I'll have a look for it. If it's there, I'll just drop it off for you guys on my way home. So I have a look around for it. I don't find it. I'm dealing with somehow from the same phone number. I'm half talking to the younger sister, half talking to her boyfriend. And um, it just eventually she like the, the girl, I, I can't find this thing. And I've searched like four different times for my car. And they keep on going from like, okay, no worries. We must have left it somewhere else. And then coming back to me and being like, hey, we definitely left it in your car. Literally back and forth four times like that until finally the girlfriend goes, oh, I'll, I'm just going to ask your girlfriend. And she texts my girlfriend when I'm with her. And she goes, hey, would you mind looking in Ben's car for this? As if I didn't check. She goes, and then Linda responds, be like, okay. At first I, I said, um, I was like, look, I, I probably know what's in my car better than she does, considering I drive it every single day. And she's like, okay, thanks for checking. And then texts her right after. And she goes, I just don't trust guys to search for things. And I was like, okay, first of all, screw you. I, I looked three times in my car for something that you left in my car for like two and a half weeks. Um, and it didn't turn up. And... And second of all, like, it's just frustrating. Second of all, it's just frustrating. How about that? I don't need a point because the first one was good enough and I was frustrated enough. Anyways, the unthinkable happens. Linda checks my car. It's not there. I was not going to tell you her name, but I guess you guys have it now. Anyways, Linda checks my car. It's not there. And like three days later, Linda finds it in my apartment. Texts the younger sister back right away. And it's like, hey, I found it. It was in Ben's apartment right away. That younger sister is like, I knew it. I knew you can't trust boys to look for things. I was right all along, and I'm going to continue believing this forever. But here's the thing. I'm not the one that moved that thing out of my car. So when they, asked, when they told me that they left it in the car, I knew that it was in the car, right? Where else would it be? Of course it's in the car. And I know that I didn't move it out of the car because I leave shit in my car for weeks. If you looked in my car right now, there is dishes from breakfast that I've left in there from two weeks ago there when I like here's how it would have gone if I saw that bag in my car I would have seen that bag and I would have forgotten about it right away I don't carry shit up to my apartment it's four floors and no elevator if I don't have to carry someone if it's not groceries that are going to go bad that night or my work bag for the next day that gets left forever not a little while forever and I'm a little it, it, it's a flaw, okay? I'm a slob. My car is fucking disgusting. But I didn't move that fucking backpack. Linda moved that backpack. I don't carry shit inside. She would have brought that in, forgotten about it, and then two weeks later, she's the hero for finding the bag, and I'm this dickwad that didn't even bother to look in my own fucking apartment for the bag full of their favorite clothes, right? Ugh. Yeah, and I... But it, who am I going to tell? What am I going to... Am I going to message them? Be like, hey, just so you guys know, I'm glad you found your bag. But that was Linda and your guys' fault that you couldn't find them, not mine. So those guys are going to forever think that I didn't give a shit about their bag. Even though I looked in my car like four times. Because I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus. What I do is I just stew on it until I make a BS Rambles. And then I attack everyone on a platform that I know they'll never see. Because they are neither one of my two subscribers. Because I know who my two subscribers are. My subscribers are my other channel, Two Stocked. So me, I'm, all, I'm always a big supporter of myself. If you're not going to support yourself, who's going to? And Linda is my other supporter. But I ask her not to listen to these. Uh, because frankly, I'm embarrassed of them. And half the content is about her. And I wouldn't be able to tell stories like this if she was going to listen to it. Because she just got kind of roasted on that one. 
Yeah, like I don't feel good about my car being as messy as it is. If you go in there, there's literally like, oh god, the passenger seat, it's flush where the seat ends and where the footwell should begin is just flush with fast food wrappers but it's not as bad as you think i go to fast food all the time but i i lettuce wrap my stuff guys everything i get is lettuce wrap so it's it's healthy right i literally kind of think that like i i know that that's bullshit and i'm eating bullshit food but i will still eat i, I went to a and w and lettuce wrap my shit like for like two weeks straight and the only reason I stopped going is because they started recognizing me there and I was like oh god this sucks I literally went and the lady's like I got um two burgers and she's like oh only two burgers today and I was like okay this is the last time I'm coming here they like they just like oh here comes the fat fuck that thinks he can lettuce wrap things and get skinny plus all of a sudden in the last two weeks it has become like infested with homeless people like infested Did anyone see that if you're actually watching this the that uh cassia pathing glitch that happens all the time i posted it on two stocked a little while ago too if you want to look at it because i was playing cassia and i had a pretty good one happen where i did like the full 360 full 360 degree circle on it um and i had never seen it before i thought i was the only one that had seen it before and then lo and behold i see it posted on reddit like a week later i was like shit I should have posted it on Reddit when it happened. People loved it. So I stuck it in the comments. Mooched some of them views, you know. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, <laughs> the lettuce wrapping thing and the influx of homeless people around this a &W. I ended up, uh, some homeless guy came up to the window of my car while I was eating outside because I usually just sit in my car and eat it. And um, he asked for food, and I was like, "Shit! Like it's hard. It's easy to say no to someone asking for money. It's hard to say no to someone asking for food." He's like, "Sorry, we're just super hungry." I was like, "Ah, oh, how? Like how can you say no to someone who's literally asking for food and saying that they're hungry?" He said it was for his aunt, but I looked at his aunt, and his aunt was fat as shit. She's way fatter than I am. I was like, "What? How much fucking A and W are you getting off of people today?" Because she is a healthily sized woman that's not missing many meals and frankly neither was this guy either um anyways i end up giving this dude half of my onion rings and i was like i'm never coming here again i get made feel shitty by the person at the window and then shaken down for half my rings afterwards i was like mm, i'm gonna find somewhere different so i've been craving mcdonald's but they don't let us wrap their stuff so it's just it's not healthy enough for me if they ever start lettuce wrapping their stuff at McDonald's, I may literally die, like, pretty much immediately after. Oh, I screwed up that uh, heel there. End up, He probably would have died anyways, but still sucks. And then I whiff that. This is a rough fight for me. This was a fun game. This is why I po decided that this was the game I was going to use. Uh, not necessarily because I played that well, but because uh, usually I'll pick games. You guys probably know I'm cherry picking the ones that I get MVP on and stuff like that that I have some flashy play, but this one, we just brawled in this top lane for a super long time, and it was, it ended up being a really fun game because of that. Um, yeah, this is, this is probably one of my favorite ranked games I've maybe ever played. I think I told these guys that towards the end. Um, but these, uh, yeah, so I, I've been craving McDonald's, but they don't let us wrap anything anymore, so, I don't even anymore. Everyone's just starting to do it. Like, we got Carl's Jr. in Canada, if anyone's listening from the States, you're like, wow, you guys don't have Carl's Jr.? Let me tell you something. We don't have shit for fast food. It's not like it is there. We have we have a and W, McDonald's. We have very few Burger Kings. And then we have like two Carl's Juniors in our entire city. And I can't think of any other fast food joints. Oh, we have Wendy's and um, Arby's. But there's like, again, Arby's is like Carl's Jr. There's like two of them in the entire city. So you don't really have options. But you don't really need options because... McDonald's is the best, unless... Oh, I'm so jealous of Jack in the Box. You guys have Jack in the Box. That's amazing. Yeah, all this fast food ravages my system. This, and I, if you've listened to any of the other episodes, you've probably heard me talk about uh, the one-ply toilet paper in my office and that I think it's a conspiracy to keep people out of the bathrooms. If you hit that, like today, I hit that two-shit maximum at work, 
And literally, I felt like after I took that second shit, I had to sit in there for a little bit of extra time because I was like, this is my last chance. Because if I have to come in here again and use this toilet paper again, my butt will literally be bleeding. Like, it is so fucking coarse. I do not understand why they are doing this to us. Like, you are not saving money. It, it's like an extra $3 and then I don't have to use half your roll to torture my butt every time I need to wipe. You probably save money by buying decent toilet paper. It's honestly insane. And I was late for work too. You know how awkward it is to take <laughs> spend like 20 minutes shitting after you showed up? I was only like five minutes late, but it's still bad, right? Everyone's sitting in their desk working and I come clopping in and then two minutes later take a 15 minute shit i'm just waiting for the day that someone brings it up because i have it loaded i'm like i just want to be like hey if your stomach was doing to you what mine's doing me to me today you would be home right now i guarantee it like you no one's coming to work you, you'd be at home being like i think i have food poisoning for me it's just fucking wednesday wednesday is the day that follows and w's cheap buddy burger day in canada and I destroy that on Tuesdays. And then I come in on Wednesday and I spend a lot of time pooping. But as long as they don't realize what I'm doing to myself on Wednesday, I think I remember to fast forward. Oh, man. This is embarrassing. I think I fast forwarded it, but I also went AFK. I'm probably snacking right now. Um, that's kind of what I do. That's why my brother used to fucking hate duo queuing with me. Because I always, I'm so ADD, if I die, I leave right away. I'm, I'm like up out of my desk doing other stuff or like scrolling Reddit or on Instagram. I'm on my phone. I'm horrible for that stuff. I'm always away. I was laughing because, so it, the reason I was late was because um, there was an accident on the road in front of me like two days in a row. I was almost late two days in a row because of it. I thought it was so funny though. I'm, I'm leaving my house this morning. And I get a call from Linda and she's like, <laughs> it's weird for her to call me at like eight o'clock in the morning. Um, especially when she left my house like an hour prior, right? Like I know she's just getting ready for work. She knows I'm probably getting ready for work. She's like, Hey, I'm like, Hey, how's it going? She's like, I'm okay. I was like, what's up? She's sounding kind of weird. She's like, I found a baby bunny. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to tell her. Um, because <laughs> like for me that's a non-issue right i see a baby bunny i'm like oh it's a baby bunny move on right her she sees the baby bunny and she's like oh no i have to help it apparently there's a cat chasing it so i, was like, I didn't know what to tell her you like okay hey, the reality of the situation is that this baby bunny's dead right like right now as we speak that baby bunny is dead <laughs> she goes she's like i don't know what to do with it i was like well I'm not wanting to tell her that it's dead because it'd probably make her cry. I was like, the best thing you could do is just like put it on, in like a thickly shrubbed area, like underneath some bushes or something. And and then that way its mom will probably find it in my head. It's like, that thing's mom is probably dead too, right? Like this is, this is wildlife that we're talking about, right? Like it's cutthroat. That cat is going to eat that fucking thing as soon as you leave. She says that magpies are attacking it. She's like, the cats and the magpies are watching everywhere that it goes. And I was like, well, I mean, you could like pick it up and try to put it somewhere. And she goes, every time I pick it up, it screams. Every time she tries to pick up this bunny, it starts wailing. So I asked her to put it on speakerphone and try to pick it up. So I could hear this thing wail, but like just I'm I'm trying to sound sympathetic, but at the same time I'm like, like other than the fact that this baby bunny is dead, this is a hilarious, hilarious situation to me. Um, so I'm just trying to assure her that like she like she has saved this bunny by by finding it and saving it from the cat, but it, like I know that that bunny is it's sad, it's dead. It's nature, you know, like that cat. I read that house cats are the most um, indiscriminate killers in the entire animal kingdom. Look at that clutch ass shield of hope right there. That's what I'm talking about. Like those, you take the ultimates that are going to have a big impact on team fights. If you want to be a big impact player, you need to take the ultimates that are going to allow you to have a big impact. That's why I don't recommend going resurrection. Yes, it's a great ultimate, but in the end, it's just making up for another person's mistakes it's not being proactive and if you want to rank up in this game you need to be proactive okay so like 
taking an alt like like uh, the level 20 talent shield of hope that's huge because it allows you to make a clutch play I saved myself there and if you watch here I believe that we turn and win the whole game I mean obviously their their cores at 11 percent being damaged but I uh, I hope that you guys understand the points that I'm making in uh, in that that baby bunny's fucking dead no, that's not what I mean. I mean taking the um, just taking the talents that suit your build and trying to have an impact on the game. And I think I call out here that I got the killing blow. Yes, I did. And you can uh, attribute that to that excellent level 1 increasing clarity click because I completed that quest and I got the bonus damage on there. Uh, anyone that actually stuck with that through gameplay, whole gameplay, I really appreciate you guys watching. I don't think you need to be told to like, comment, subscribe because I just casually mentioned it and not telling you. Uh, so you probably remember that already. And I'm going to fade out so that you can't see my shitty ranking in this game and judge me based on that. And uh, throw up all of the social media details and that's the best way to keep up. I've been streaming more lately. So hopefully you guys can uh, follow the Instagram and I will throw up on there when I'm streaming. And a lot of the time I'm playing with my friends and most of the time it's the same guys from Two Stock. So if you like the Two Stock channel, uh, you'd probably enjoy our streaming too. And it's usually a lot more casual than this because frankly all my friends suck at this game. Uh, except for my older brother who's pretty godlike. Anyways, there's nothing on the screen right now so I'm going to shut up. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll try to have another video out as soon as I can. Thanks, everyone. Bye.